We are at uh, Bioneers 2011 in Detroit at beautiful Mary Grove College, and uh, we are talking with Deanne Bedner from the Straw Bale Studio. How are you doing today? Great. Great. It's great to be here with everyone. So uh, tell us about the Straw Bale Studio. Where is it and what do you guys do? We are located about 30 minutes north of Pontiac out in rural uh, Oakland County in some nice wooded land and um, we're doing natural building and sustainable living skills of all kinds. We're creating models so that people can come and visit and tour and workshops internships and opportunities to see straw bale structures, thatched roofs, um, solar ovens, and all sorts of other experiments in reconnecting directly to, to our land for our needs joyfully uh, using our hands and, and creating community through the process. So for those who don't know, the idea, the concept of using straw and clay to create a structure it doesn't seem very sturdy, it doesn't seem like a very good idea long term. But in fact, that's not really the case. So can you talk about that a little bit? What is, what is that technology uh, of how you build with those materials? And what are actually the benefits? Great, let me get my model here. Okay. This is a, a small straw bale. We actually use full-size bales, and there's a lot of um, horses and farms in the area, so it's easy to get local straw. And the clay is attached to it. It's a, actually a clay-sand mix, and it's attached to this, and it's strong, and it's um, absorbent, and it, uh, it's a good mediator of moisture. It takes in a little moisture. It lets it go. It's a great surface. It's holding up over the years on the structure. It breathes. You know, there's no uh, water vapor or vapor barriers that make a house you know, feel closed in. We've got a, a nice natural system. And straw bale is, is a proven uh, building approach that's been used uh, lots of different parts of the world for a very long time. So, in some sense, you're not a pioneer. You may be a pioneer in Michigan here, yeah. but in fact, you're really bringing a tradition, a time-honored tradition of using natural building materials, uh, really original green building in some sense. Yes, um, the combination of earth, uh, clay and sand, and, and straw or some sort of fiber has certainly been used in lots of different ways. And then at the turn of the century, when they could bale the hay, or the straw actually, um, it was it became you know a, sort of a new form of the old materials, and uh, particularly was developed in the Southwest. But um, it's applicable to other climates, um, even Louisiana and humid climates or cold climates like Michigan. There have been tests for uh, fire burn, lateral load, compressive strength tests. You know, they pass all those with great colors, so there really isn't a safety issue. It's actually uh, less burnable than a, a stud frame house after the plasters are on it. And Deanne, what's your background? What, what brought you to uh, this uh, uh, intriguing mix of various sustainable building uh, options and sustainable living options for the home? Well, I came up in a family where my father was a hunter and he did things with his hand from scratch. And um, so I saw all of that. And then I uh, was an art teacher. And so I'm, you know, just like, like using my hands, using materials, and then got a master's degree in social ecology out from in, at, in, in Vermont at Goddard College. Goddard Came in Plainfield, back. Vermont. Yes, exactly. Came back and taught a, um, a course on sustainable future from 1981 to 1996 when I retired. And then got involved with the people that um, are doing um, this type of building with earth called Cobb House, um, and Cobb is a word for a rounded lump or mass when the clay sand mix is made into a loaf and applied to a wall system. So I studied with people on natural building and then came to Michigan and they said use straw bale here because you need insulation. So we switched over to um, from an earthen wall system to the straw bale system and uh, our hand harvesting our logs 
and hand harvesting the Phragmite reed grass that grows invasively in this area. We cut off the reed heads and leave them in the field, and then uh, we can tap up the reed to make a, a really beautiful and uh, durable surface, um, essentially that looks like this, at a 45 degree angle and feathered up into place. The water just rolls off, and if it happens to get in a little ways, that strand will take it out to the surface. So it's a pretty wonderful technique. Great. So if people would like to learn more about the Straw Bale Studio, uh, learn about this kind of uh, building approach, mm -hmm. uh, how can they find you? Well, the easiest way really would just be Google in Facebook Straw Bale Studio, and okay. you'll find us there. And then from there, you can go to the website, and we do have programs. Um, on many different things. Uh, in October 22nd and 23rd, we're doing earth sculpting and uh, plastering, which a lot of people, it's a nice place to start, kind of using it small scale. We have a workshop on thatching in November, November 6th. Uh, introduction, you know, you can you know, get you to try your hand at it and see the buildings. And then uh, throughout the season, we do a variety of things. Um, rocket stove, we just completed a workshop in that, and uh, ca candle making with local beeswax, and just enjoying um, reconnecting and falling back in love, you know, with, with the world around us, and uh, creating community in the process. Great. Thank you, Deanne. Thank you for sharing this, uh, this great work that you're doing, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Great. Thank you, Mark.